This is FormCan, a form builder for any type of website. And I'll be testing three modules today. How is it building the form? How is it filling out the form? And how are the integrations? So let's get into it. If you're new here, then welcome to my channel. I share marketing tools that has an edge every week. And today we're testing FormCan, which is a form builder. And in general, you can use forms for everything. You can use them for sign up for newsletters, signing up to an actual platform, but also just if you want to gather research. Let's say that you want to build a product or you want to market something, but you need some research in order to figure out whether you should actually go through with this. Then a simple form where you ask some questions, build it up and then get the feedback that is so powerful. And I'll show you how you do that with FormCan. So this is a platform form can and I have already been building some forms. What I will recommend you doing is to start out with a form template because then you can get started and get an idea of how it is working. So let's take this down here, tax and financial service request form. So I'll just press use this template and we are now in the form builder. When I first started using the form builder, it had a small learning curve, but once you get into it, at least for me, I really start liking using it because you can easily drag and drop the different items around. You can make them smaller and you can line them up side by side. But the way the builder works is that you have all your questions and text here. And then you have some different components out here that you can add. So we can add a slider, for instance, and with the slider, we then give it a label so we know what it is. Then we can add some help text and then set what the minimum and maximum value could be. So this would be something like how likely would you be to use this tool? Then we set a minimum value and a maximum and I'll set 10 just in this case. So now that's it. Now we have an extra field, a slider. We can also add a rating here, which is super interesting because if you want to ask someone not only for rating, but for them to say from a, on a scale from one to five, how likely are you to recommend this specific feature to another colleague, just as an example. So that is what you can use the star rating for here. And then you can see how easy it is to just add all of these different questions and also text as well. And as soon as you have everything ready, then you can publish it. But before we get to that, you can also set your fields to required, disabled or hidden. Often you will set them to hidden whenever you want to pass on a value to your integration, which I'll also show you, but that the person doesn't need to fill out. Often it's a code so you can define what form is it that has been submit, but it can be anything. And when you build your form, there are a lot of custom options. You can also here change your submit buttons and your next buttons because you can also build multiple steps. So here you can see we have step one, which is the tax and financial service request form. And then we can add another page up here. We can either break it to a new page or we can just add a new page and then it slides to the side and then we can basically just scroll between them. It's super intuitive once you get a hang of it and then you can just start building your form. They do also have logics and a simple logic could be if the answer on the first question is A, then in the second question show this, otherwise skip the question. Just as an example, that is super easy to set up. So we can say if the total amount of taxes you own is greater than, let's say 20,000, then we want to hide the fifth question. So now we have a logic that states that if your total amount of taxes is greater than 20,000, then hide the fifth question. That's how easy it is to set up, super simple. We can then also get some insights to see how visually it looks like. And now I will say that we have a form that is ready to go. Before I publish it, I will just go to the preview and design page. This opens up in a new tab and then we can see how our form is looking. We can see the two steps here and then we can actually start designing it. So here we have a lot of different themes that we can choose between. And you can see that by clicking on them, then they change the entire interface of this form. But one thing that I'm really missing here is a way to build my own theme because I want to keep this within my design guidelines. I want to use my own fonts, my own colors, my own font sizes. That is not possible, but I do like that you can just change between the themes this easily. Another thing that I'm really missing in this preview is a way to see it in 
both tablet mode, but also on the phone. I know that I can just drag together the browser and then see how it looks like, but I would like to see it actually emulated on a phone or a tablet, that is not possible. But here we can change between the dark or light mode. Then we can add some custom styling here. So we can add a background image, we can add a banner image, we can change the colors a little bit here, and then we can add custom CSS. But here they should really just add a way for me to set my fonts and then make it into a design or a template that I could reuse on all my forms because I want to keep the same design guidelines. But other than that, going down here, we can set our font sizes. We can set a font here where you can choose either a Google font. They do not have all of them, but they have some. Or we can just set the system font. But now with the form ready, then let's try and publish it and then see how it is filling out this form. So let's open this one in a new window. You can also choose to embed your form on your own website, but here we have the form. So we can here simply enter all the different questions, our state and so on down the line. So if you remember, we did set a logic that said if the total amount of taxes you owe are greater than 20,000, then your state should be hidden. So let's try and fill it out and we can see that now it's hidden. So that's working very well. We'll just set some ratings here. Now what I really like is that I can save this for later. So let's say that this is a very long form and I don't have time to fill everything out now, then I can save it for later. One problem though is that now I have filled everything out and if I refresh the page, then you can see everything is lost. And the same happens for save for later. So I really want them to save the state because often when we have long forms, it's not always we have time to fill everything out at once. So if we could fill something out and then come back to it later, it would really increase the conversion rate because this is also a way to help people remind them that they need to fill out the form. Another way they could do it is that every time I try to exit this form, then they would ask me if I wanted an email to fill it out later. These small tweaks is what helps increase the conversion rate of people filling out the actual form. But overall, it is super simple to fill out. It is still a simple form. It is not like we see it with type form where we go through a story of asking the name, the age, and then those values are used further down in the forms. It is very simple to set up. It's simple to fill out and you can see it works well. But now let's see the integrations as the last part. When you want to set up integrations, it's a little bit tricky to find at first because you have to go out of the form and then hover over here and click on the settings icon here. And then you can see we have integration. And within integrations, they have Sapier and Integrately, which is super important because those two open up to almost any type of app out there. They do not have any native integrations to any email systems. They do have to Slack, and that's mainly for notifications. Then they have to Google Drive, Google Sheets, so you can list out all of your submissions but Sapien Integrately is opening up so we can do whatever we want with the data. And through Sapien and Integrately, you can then integrate with your email system in this sense. But all of these three main modules together, you can start use completely free. So if you want to test it out and use it, then you should definitely go ahead. But I will say that if you require a native email integration, then this is not the tool for you because you have to go through either Sapien or Integrately but if you just want a form builder that is easy to use, free to get started, then I think this could definitely be a tool for you because you can easily design the different things. You can't go really into details of designing the font and everything on each of the single forms. Then you have to do it on all of them individually. You can't just build a theme. So if you're a power user like that, then I will recommend you to take a look at Typeform. But let me know in the comment section, what is important for you within a form builder? Personally, I want to give Formcan four stars. It is a solid form builder and the design builder is super intuitive to use. It's easy to change everything. I just wish that they had custom themes. It is such a deal breaker for me at least because it will save me so much time. And then we really need those small conversion tricks or a way that we can build them ourselves. But if you want to see a different type of form builder that is a bit more simplified, then I have made a review of ghosts and forms up here. Thank you so much for watching. Let's catch up on the next one.